Thank you for joining me for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 301 for Tuesday, October 27th, 2020, focusing on Luke chapters 16 through 18. In Luke chapter 16, we see another parable unique to the Gospel of Luke, the parable of the unjust steward. In Luke 16:1. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. In the parable, the manager gets informed he will be fired. He then goes around decreasing the amount owed by debtors, which is legally unjust by worldly standards. At the same time, Everyone gets taken care of. The manager gets favor, the debtors get forgiveness, and the rich man gets partial payment. He gets paid back in some of these funds that might have been um, too harsh or, or hard for other individuals to pay back. Now, in the style of Luke, Jesus cares little about the financial implications of this whole matter, contrasting dishonest wealth with true riches. Jesus speaks multiple times about being faithful, connecting God with relationships to others. Now, on the opposite end, un unfaithful becomes connected to wealth in disregard for the care of others. In Luke 16, 11, uh, it says, If then you have not been faithful with dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? So the idea uh, is being faithful is very much being connected with God and serving God's care for the orphan, the widow, and the oppressed, using your finances and resources to their benefit. This continues in verse 13 where Jesus again says, you cannot serve God and wealth. Luke then critiques the Pharisees, calls them lovers of money, People who try to enter the kingdom of God by force, and also the rich man who disregards a poor man named Lazarus. So that whole story of the rich man and the poor man of Lazarus um, is directed at the Pharisees. In this parable, which again is unique to Luke, in Luke 16, 19, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. When they die, it is the poor man who gets comforted by Father Abraham, and the rich man is not comforted by anything, especially not his wealth which he leaves behind. In Luke 16, 25, through the words of Father Abraham, he says, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. The idea is that we in our lives should be caring about the poor, those who are worse off than we about using our resources and money, being willing to use that to help people who are in need, because this is what the kingdom of God is about. So in Luke chapter 17, it focuses on some other teachings of Jesus, including overwhelming forgiveness. In Luke 17, verse 4, And if the same person sins against you seven times a day, and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. This undeserved forgiveness and grace uh, comes also in another story unique to Luke where Jesus heals ten lepers. Only one of them returns to give thanks for this gift of grace and life, and this person happens to be a Samaritan. Jesus proclaims salvation for the outsider in Luke 17:19. Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Or literally in the Greek, your faith has saved you. 
Yet again, this word to be made well, to be made whole, to be healed is uh, the same word that is used for salvation. Jesus then compares the kingdom of uh, the kingdom of God to Noah's flood and the unexpected destruction of Sodom and the way that God's kingdom will come uh, to fruition quickly. Two strange things happen at the end of the chapter. First, look at verse 36. It is missing in the Greek. Somehow it became added in the King James Version. Maybe it was added to the Latin Vulgate. Not exactly sure. It sounds very familiar to uh, chapter or verse 35. So maybe it was misscribed and repeated again in verse 35. Either way, in King James Version, which is how we get the num numbering for our English translations, it is there in the King James and not in the original Greek. Now, the second strange things that happens is that in verse uh, 37 says, you know, another comment which I think is really directed towards the Pharisees. It's one that I don't really understand. It kind of feels in some ways out of context. Um, it sounds kind of harsh, but Jesus is also critiquing the Pharisees here, so maybe it does fit. In Luke 17, verse 37, it says, Then they ask him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, the Pharisees, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. So I think there's a couple ways you can interpret that. Um, looking at the commentaries, just um, I was not able to find really a sufficient answer for my liking, but feel free to come up with what you think it might be. Moving on to Luke chapter 18, our last chapter for today. And yet another parable unique to Luke. We see justice given in an unexpected form. In Luke 18, 1, Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and to not lose heart. Jesus focuses on a judge who does not execute justice. This unjust judge encounters his challenge, his bane, a persistent widow who comes to him over and over again demanding justice, and ultimately justice is granted as the uh, unjust judge says to himself in Luke 18, verse 4, Though I have no fear for God or respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. Jesus likewise invites us as disciples to pray persistently to God. This God wants to give us justice, and the persistent prayer will help that come quickly. And comparing a prayer of the self-righteous individual and a humbled sinner, Jesus concludes in Luke 18, verse 14, All who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. After praising children, Jesus speaks the familiar encounter of the rich person. This time, instead of a rich young man, it's the rich ruler, which parallels are found in Matthew 19 and Mark chapter 10. In Luke 18:18, 18, 18, a certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus invites him to liquidate all his assets, give the money away, which the ruler declines. The disciples, who have left literally everything, ask how can anybody say, be saved if the stakes are so high? Jesus proclaims salvation is dependent upon one thing, God. In Luke 18, 27, he replied, What is impossible for mortals is possible for God. To reference how this salvation will occur, Jesus then restates his death and resurrection for a third time, which his disciples cannot yet understand. Now in Jericho, Jesus hears a man who was born blind repeatedly shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And again, 
The faith of the individual brings physical healing, eternal salvation, and glory to God. May you be focused on God. May you be a good manager of all that God has entrusted to you, yourselves, your time, your possessions, all of these things God gives to us. So may we think of God when we think of what we have. May we be grateful for what we have this and every day. And I look forward to giving thanks to God uh, for what God's um, word made flesh reveals to us and is recorded in scripture as we will get to more of what Jesus says next time.